Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, my loved ones. God bless you. God bless you. All those watching me from America, even though it's your sleeping time, but you are you are so interested in knowing much about love and you are also showing me love. I want to appreciate you for waking up at this odd hour to be with me on the Saturday morning love talk show. The Lord bless you and keep you. All those watching me from Nigeria, even though we are one hour ahead of you, you know, I want to appreciate you for standing with me and for showing interest in this program. You want to know the deeper things about love. I appreciate you, those watching me from Ghana, all those watching me from areas in the nations of the world where we have time differences. I know that it's a sacrificial thing you are doing. And I just appreciate your interest in knowing uh, much and more about love. I really appreciate you. And I want you to know without any doubt that I love you even as the Lord loves you and even as, you know, you may want to be loved. Love is what makes the world go round. I have always said. So I want to assure you this morning that I'm sustained by your love also and by the love of Christ. You know, your being on the program is a sign of love for me and I do appreciate, I appreciate all my friends, those who are already coming online. I can see all of you coming online. The Lord bless you. I want to appeal to you that we use the next two minutes to just share this program and let the world hear about it. The world needs to know more about love. So much has been said about love and mo so much is still being said every day but i want you to know that it is never enough there's always something to learn about love so let's just give ourselves a few minutes even to share uh, this program in the name of jesus and in the meantime you know like i've always uh, like i did last sunday uh, saturday i'm going to play some music to make your eyes wide open you know some music that will be to you like coffee so while you are in your bed or on your coffee table or your breakfast table i want you to enjoy this music i want you to tap that man that is still snoring wake him up wake him up wake your man up wake your woman up wake your daughter up wake your son up you know get your breakfast ready get your coffee ready see my own thing my coffee my tea is ready here you know let me introduce my table to you i have tea there i have my citron juice you know to mix with it i have my honey i have honey here so you can actually pour your tea blend it with a little bit of citron juice and put a little honey to your taste and then you have a good a good cup of uh, tea ready to drink and for those of you who love to drink pap in the morning put your pap till you get your pap ready add some milk you can also add some of this and it will it will give it a sour taste like the original African pap and then your pap is ready. I'm sure that by now you will have said your prayers because prayer is the starting of every day. It is prayer. We have to pray before we start eating or before we come to the breakfast table. I want to believe that you prayed before coming to this table with me and then get your breakfast ready and let's share some fun. Let's have some fun together. I'm glad to be part of your breakfast. I'm glad to be your part of your Saturday morning and today is going to be very very exciting we are going to go further in the discussion about love and for those of you who asked some questions last uh, Saturday I will see if I can touch on those questions today otherwise uh, I will create time to answer those questions if you have questions you should please do your best to put them in my com in the comment box and I will see if I'll be able to uh, uh, attend to those questions god god bless you hallelujah god bless you god bless you i also have this for breakfast i don't know what you have for breakfast but i have uh, you know i have this you know fresh from the bakery i have this fresh from the bakery you know i'm not going to be able to finish all but then if you are able to join me online, if you have a long enough hand to come and take some of it, you are just welcome. 
I've got this straight from the bakery, hot, hot, seasoning hot, you know, because uh, my baby is not around this morning to put the table for me, but thank God she has taught me one or two things so that even when she's not around, I can put my breakfast table, <laughs> hallelujah. It's not the same thing as being served, you know, it's not the same thing as having it, you know, by my side. When she has made it and put it and she treats me like a king, it makes the breakfast even much more sweeter but that is not to say that i should not serve her too though so sometimes it's not about me serving you know about me being served breakfast or lunch or dinner by my wife i should also take time to serve her whenever the time arises you know we men should also serve women you understand uh you know fortunately for me i have my wife is is is, is just is she's just a cook freak you know she lost cooking so much that uh, you know anytime i appeared in the kitchen to want to cook something it's like i'm infringing on her right it's like i'm crossing a boundary <laughs> you know well i'm blessed with a wife like that but that does not mean we should not do some you know surprise them sometimes take a cup of coffee to them in bed or a cup of tea and then let's start the day with the tune of love hallelujah and if you have not said i love you to your husband you have not said i love you to your wife this morning why don't you give her a kiss and give her give him a kiss and give so yourself a hug and just say some words of love i love you just say that to your partner and if you don't have a partner you are hearing it from your friend and pastor this morning that i love you but i also want to assure you that the love of your life the one who will not walk out of you the one who will stay with you for the rest of the journey will still walk into your life and you can have life that is forever i'm praying for you i'm praying that very soon some people will be connected to the right person that they desire to live the rest of their lives with in life so enjoy some coffee and also enjoy this music amen the music i'm going to play for you i want to give you a little background to it uh it is uh, nothing is gonna change my love for you you know nothing is gonna change my love for you uh, you know i told you before that uh, <laughs> i'm still the old tunes kind of man i still enjoy some old tunes you know i had a very very challenging uh what do you call it uh, when i was uh, when i became a christian i was still young and i had this uh, this argument in my mind that a man should not listen to what they call worldly music. You should not listen to worldly music. And here I am, I love them. There are some songs I just love. And I know within me that these songs, they are not, even they are not devilish. They are only, the only problem is that they were sung by unbelievers. You know, so that makes us dub them worldly music okay there are songs that are corrupting yes i agree but if we are talking about music music that really can you know add can pep up your morning pep up your love life pep up your you know there are some songs there even though they were sung by unbelievers that but they they still contain some very powerful messages that can you know spice up your relationship so just i'm not saying you should listen to just any song you should be able to listen to songs that are meaningful and that are impactful and so at a point i asked myself oh the car i drive is a worldly car it wasn't manufactured by a christian the clothes i wear they are worldly clothes they were not made or sewn by christians you know so the shoes i put on they are worldly shoes but they were not manufactured by christians so some music you know, even though we're sung by unbelievers, but they still have some powerful impact on our relationship in life. So go on and choose your music carefully. So I promise you that every Saturday morning, I will share some lovely music with you. And I pray that it blesses you and that it gingers something up, even in your system. Hallelujah. So this morning, I want to play for you uh, this number. Let me see now. It's uh, nothing's gonna change my love for you. You know, isn't isn't that a good message to say to your wife or to say to your husband or to hear from your fiancé? 
somebody who is dating you to tell you nothing is going to change my love for you. Nothing is going to change my love for you was originally composed by Michael, uh, let me see his name now, Michael Massa and Jerry Goffin. Michael Massa and Jerry Goffin, they were the ones that originally composed the song, but the song was originally performed or sung by George Benson, a great man, a great singer, a great guitarist. It was in his album 2020. And let me read the words for you if you are interested. He said, if I had to live my life without you near me, the days will all be empty. The nights will seem so long. With you, I see forever, oh so clearly. I might have been in love before, but it never felt this strong. Our dreams are young and we both know they will take us where we want to go. Hold me now, touch me now. I don't want to live without you. And then it goes on to sing, nothing's gonna change my love for you. You ought to know by now how much I love you. I will allow the singer to sing it anyway. One thing you can be sure of, I will never ask for more than your love. So, you know, if you tell somebody, somebody you love, you truly love that, all I desire from you is your love. I just love you for loving you and nothing is good. And I, that's all I desire for you. And I want to assure you also that nothing will ever change my love for you. It is something, it's a good way to start your day as a lover. It's a good day, it's a good way to strengthen your relationship. Nothing is going to change my love for you. These are words of assurance and i believe everyone needs our loss to be assured when in a relationship please enjoy this song nothing is gonna change my love for you in the meantime i want to see you to sharing it sharing it god bless you my dear brother and son that you look to i see you online already i bless god for your life how is my lovely daughter doing there i hope you have her by your side god bless you my dear daughter princess it was your birthday yesterday i celebrate you I celebrate you and I celebrate the love of God over your life I really love those uh, you know that po those poetic lines that Joseph put on our forum for you I love so I, I never realized it could be so romantic I love those poetic lines that I put on the forum for you I celebrate you and I pray that by the end of this month, I think next week will be the last Saturday, I will create a special, you know, a special place in this program to celebrate all those born in May. You know, Martina was also born in May. Charlotte was born in May. Uh, who again was born in May? And they are so, I know that brother Andrew's wife from Rotterdam, uh, the birthday is today. Uh, Sister Samantha from Rotterdam, the birthday also uh, is in May. My friend Banki the best bed it was yesterday 22nd of may there are so many people out there people i love and i really care for who were born in may i celebrate you all and i pray that your love your life will last long and you will not end up in an accident in the name of jesus am i talking too much because many people are just waiting to hear the song nothing is gonna change my love for you hallelujah I need to take it right to the beginning. There is it now. Nothing is going to change my love for you. One to one performed by George Benson himself. Let's go. In the meantime, get your coffee ready, get your tea, and enjoy the music. Take us where we want. 
Hold me now, touch me now. I don't want to live without you. Nothing's gonna change my love for you. Sing it. Sing it to your lover. Nothing is gonna change my love for you. I love you just the way you are. So come with me and share the view. I'll help you see forever you. Hold me now, touch me now. I don't want to live without you. God bless you, KB. I see you online. God bless you. I love you, my dear friend from from very very long time ago god bless you god bless you my daughter happy god bless you my daughter Miriam from france god bless you my childhood friend uluwadari isaac god bless you my own sister and great lover of this brother of yours i bless you uh, dickness victoria bonsu lord bless you thank you for coming online my darling daughter, Monisha Day, I want you to know that I love you so much. The Lord bless you for coming online. Please go on and share with your friends. One thing you can be sure of, I will never ask more than your love. I will never ask for more than your love. It's so assuring. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> God, Sister Vicky said I'm spoiling the song. <laughs> I do not <laughs> I don't I know I don't have the voice of a singer, but you never know. You know, that's what you think. When I sing this song for my wife, it works. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I never ask for more than your love. Nothing's gonna change my love for you. You are an over now how much I love you. <laughs> Hallelujah. God bless you. Nothing is going to change my love for you. And if you love that song, you just go on and you find it on YouTube, download it and play it for your lover. Maybe in the morning, early in the morning, especially on the Saturday morning like this when nobody's rushing to go to work. And I'm telling you, you will get some smiley face from her or from him. And that with you know that will jump start some other things some other emotions and you never know where it will end <laughs> hallelujah now we have been talking about love and love you know we're trying to get to know the true meaning of love and i'm telling you you know just the definition of love itself can take you know me you know months and months and months to to really finish you know there's no way i can stop i can finish telling you of all, all there is to, 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 to know about love, especially the definition. But eventually, I want to assure you that some of these ideas God has deposited in my mind, they are in a book. You know, I've, I'm, I'm, I'm done with my book now. It's going through editing. And when it is ready, I will let you know. And I will see how we are going to, everybody will be able to get a copy so that even after having heard it from me, you can read more of it, even in the book that I'm going to be publishing or be bringing out the launching very soon god bless you so we keep we go on trying to understand the true meaning of love you know i was talking about the first one i've mentioned if you remember and that's where we have been is erotic love and erotic love called eros and i told you that erotic love is something you know that is attached to the physical it is physical it is sensual sometimes mundane sometimes fickle sometimes temporary but if we manage it can 
it can grow into something deeper but erotic love on its own is not enough to sustain a relationship because at the end of the day if the reason for which that person is in love with you is removed then you are gone love is gone when the object of love is gone then love itself is gone god bless you my daughter mercy you know from rotterdam that is my unofficial coordinator and manager she is always very active in any of my programs i love you and i want to say a great a great good morning i've said it before i came online of course beautiful morning to my wife out there i know she's watching me i love you and you know and you know and you know again and again that nothing is going to change my love for you i do not know maybe we'll be able to appeal to god to allow us to get married in heaven if that were possible then believe me i will propose to you again when we get to heaven god bless you i love you josephine uh, god bless you now I, I like i'm saying we are trying to understand the true meaning of love you know because you know love is good but when love is misunderstood or misapplied i said yesterday that it can be as deadly as death and this is the vein of the problem that many people do not understand the true meaning of love many people just say i love you i love you without meaning it and without knowing why they are saying it you know i love you you know sometimes it is i love what you are putting on but they won't put it like that. I love your your physique. I love your your physical, you know, your your looks. But they will not put it like that. I love your your popularity. I love your status. I love I love your wealth. I love I love how you look. I love the car you drive. You know, there are, you know some things that attract you to the person. Most people do not say I love that thing. They say I love you. Meanwhile, their eyes are not on you. Their heart is not for you. Their heart is for that thing that they are seeing in you or about you. So I love you because I love you because you are beautiful. I love you because you are rich. I love you because you are popular. I love you because of the family name you carry. I love you because of your profession. I love you because you model, you model somebody I know. I don't know if I ever told you that sometimes some people love, you know, maybe there is a, there is, there is, there is a popular actress or actor that i've experienced this thing before that you love you know there are some people you just love maybe you see them on tv or inside film or you see them in your locality in your school in your city in your community and they are unreachable maybe they are older than you or their class is too far fetched from you and you cannot reach them and then sometimes you just come across somebody that looks well, in your own, by your own observation, that person looks like the person that you, you love, you adore, you adore, you admire. And then you begin to love that person because he looks like Beyonce, Beyonce or he looks like, uh, who? he looks like Michael Jackson, or he looks like uh, one popular, you know, LeBron or a popular footballer. He looks like this, he looks like that. You fall in love because that person looks like the person you really admire. Now, that is misplaced love. But it do happen that you love somebody because the person looks like a popular actor, a popular actress, a popular singer, a popular uh, sports person, footballer or athlete or whatever, a popular person that you know but you are not able to reach. And so when you see somebody that looks in remotely, uh, you know, like that person, you begin to love that person. If you are some love, that is love, that is misplaced love. It's a kind of erotic love and that is transferred, it is influenced by somebody you admire. And these things do not last long because at the end of the day, you are going to realize that, oh, this person is not Ronaldo. He looks like Ronaldo, but does not have any quality. He does not even have anything to do with Ronaldo. And then love is gone. So erotic love can be in various forms and shapes, but if well managed, like I said, it can transform. It can, you know, it can go into another level. 
It can grow into another level if you are sincere about your your search for true love. Erotic erotic love can be a good you know building ground for you to know more about that person and not just be thinking about the beauty of that person or the physical attribute of that person or the wealth of that person or the background of that person. You know, if you are really genuine in your search for true love, erotic love can galvanize into the next level of love. But today I want to talk about the strange, the strange side of love. God bless you, my brother and friend. Minister Mike, let me try and go on my Facebook here so that I can read from here. Those of you who are joining the screen is kind of far from me. And I want to appreciate God for everyone who is online already. I want to see if I'll be able to, to I want to acknowledge you for being with me. Just be patient. We have not even started. It's going to get hot. Amen. Okay. So many people come online these days that you don't even know again, you know. So many people are online. Well, thank God for technology, that with technology, so many people can pass their messages across to the world. But of course, it's not every message that is good, it's not every message that is genuine. So when you are, you know, choosing, uh, you want to choose who to listen to, I want you to just be careful. Make sure whatever that is being said is something that will bless your life and it's not something that will exploit you or exploit you or destroy you. God bless you all. God bless you, God bless you. So, God bless Sister Titila Yajai. I see you are online already. God bless my sister, Oge Ike Jora. I appreciate you all for being with me online. Sister Denise Elin. Oh, this woman is a lover of mine. She's a very good sister. I love you and I appreciate you. Enjoy this morning's Love Talk show. Amen. And um, as much as is possible, I will do my best to acknowledge you when you are joining you know to celebrate but please let's celebrate this thing let's make it go viral share with your friends share on your pages and i believe you know many people will be blessed by what we are talking about here today so like i said i want to talk a bit about the strange side of love still getting to know or understand the deeper meaning of love and like i said i have not even moved beyond the first definition that the first type of love which is erotic love and we can just keep talking about erotic love you know all day and all night long so but i want to share with you the strange side of love and you you know you, you have you has it ever occurred to you that sometimes love behaves strangely has it ever occurred to you that love is channeled to people that you cannot understand why somebody will love somebody like this i think it as i said the last saturday also i remember talking to you about uh, my mom you know how she went through a lot of abuses from my father and she still stayed there you know and uh, i remember uh, uh, you know <laughs> love can make you behave strangely also it can make, make you behave strangely and it, it can make you, love can be channeled to the, the strangest of persons. And you will wonder why will this person love this person? You know, I remember there was an apostle I invited to come and minister to us in Endoving some years ago. And I, my wife and I, we drove him to his hotel and to settle him down. He came alone and when he got to his new his room, put his valise down and all that stuff, you know, and he brought out something from his box. It was the frame photo of his wife. And this man laid that frame right by the other pillow. And he looked at me, he said, man of God, you know, this is how I carry my wife with me wherever I go. 
you know, uh, because sometimes you cannot come with that. And I'm asking myself, but instead of bringing her photo, why could you not bring the woman? You live in Holland, the program is in Holland, but because you are in the Amsterdam area and you, 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 you know, we felt it would be easier for you, we agree with you that it would be easier for you to sleep over, you know, then you just come. But the guy brought the photo frame on the wire. He said, no, this is how I carry my wife wherever I go. So sometimes I'm asking myself, do I have to carry my wife on in my hand wherever I go or in my heart? But that's the strange I mean, So some people behave strangely. For him, that is how to carry his wife wherever he goes. For some people, it's about wearing the ring. And it's good that wherever you put the ring, okay, when your wife doesn't see the ring, he's, he's upset. Why are you not putting the ring I put on your finger? When you don't see the ring on your wife's finger, you are a bit upset. Why are you not putting the ring on your finger? She has to put it, you know, in bed, out of bed, when she's bathing, when she's at work, you just want that ring. Meanwhile, ring is just a symbol. It's not a proof of love. Now, I, I don't know, some people will want to just, you know, give me a slap for saying some of these things, but this is just what I feel and I have my, the right of opinion. So wearing a ring, uh, does, it's not a proof of your love, it's just a symbol that you are already connected or engaged or, you know, you are attached to somebody. Now, let me go on. That was, by the way, so... Uh, there was a case that happened in Holland some times ago, you know, a very close son of mine shared this testimony with me. This guy was arrested because he didn't have documents. Meanwhile, my tea is getting cold. Excuse me. I'm seeing some questions here. What is the oil that lubricates love in a marriage? I may know the answer, but let me add to it. Let me add to what I know already. Can you please give me your answer? What is the oil that lubricates love in a marriage? Wow, <laughs> I'll come to that. Okay, now, uh, you know, let, let me, please give me some time to sip my tea. Sip your own tea also. And uh, let there be no shitting. I don't want my tea to get cold. Okay. So there was this, uh, uh, Sister Ogi, I'm going to come back to your question. There was this brother who was arrested because he was undocumented, what we call illegal in Holland some years ago, and he was put in prison. He was put in a deportation camp. But why in the prison, there was this lady working in the same prison as a security person or something like that. And each time, you know, this lady will go and stand where she could see this guy this particular it was a nigerian guy and she will be looking at this guy and be looking at this guy you know every every opportunity she had she would look at this guy and she was trying to reach out to this guy whatever it was that attracted this lady to this guy it was not that they spoke it was not that she knew him from Adam, but somehow she felt strongly attracted to this guy who was awaiting deportation. And guess what? You know, just before the guy, the guy was eventually deported. But just before she was deported, this girl was able to slip a piece of paper containing her phone number to the guy. With a message, just call me when you get to Nigeria. One thing led to the other. This guy, this guy called the girl, and they began to they began to communicate. And one thing led to the other. The lady went to Nigeria. The lady processed the guy's papers, and the lady succeeded in bringing back this guy to Holland. What, what is it? You know, and you are wondering, what, what happened? What happened? What did this girl see in this guy who was in prison, who was incarcerated, who was, you know, you, somebody you couldn't even communicate with? 
But somehow, somehow, there was, a, the, the, you know, something was aroused in this girl and she was able to build on it. I wouldn't know because I'm talking of something that happened about, you know, more than 15, 20 years ago. I wouldn't know how that, that relationship is now, but it went that far. The strange side of love. I also remember uh, a program I watched many years ago. It was uh, Bill Clinton was visiting some African countries, and I remember it was uh, President uh, Ulushe Gombasanjo that hosted Bill Clinton that year. And there was this, it was uh, that time when the issue of HIV, AIDS, the spread of AIDS, you know, so much was going on about HIV, you know, staying clean, staying safe, and all that stuff, and doing your best to accommodate those who are infected. Don't label them, don't do this. Okay, where am I going? There was this couple that came to the podium to the hall to testify what happened this man i heard it with my own ears i saw the program with my own eyes this guy was dating this lady dating they were cutting they were not married they were in courtship and somewhere somehow this guy had fallen in love so much with this girl but then you know, before they got married, they they wanted to do tests. Yeah, you know I mean, to know their blood group and blood and blood and all that stuff. But uh, when they went for tests, it was discovered that the lady was HIV positive. So this guy said, "Yeah, when he had the news that his fiancée was uh, HIV positive, he was uh, he was shattered." But at the end of the day, he sat and talked deeply about it and realized that the love he had for the woman was so deep, he could not let go. So he decided with knowledge that this person I'm going to marry is infected. He, he went on and married this lady. And he told us, you know, he said in that program that after about three months or so, he also went for, you know, the test and he was confirmed to be HIV positive also. And I, I asked myself, what kind of love is this for God's sake? The strange side of love. You know that there is something wrong with this man. You know that there is something wrong with this woman. But you still want to love the person. You still want to spend the rest of your life with that person. Why? That is the strange side of love. God bless you, my son. I have only... Ogundele, God bless you, Pastor. Olatunde Alabi Areye, God bless you. I just am. Um, I appreciate you for coming. A day near your media of Bafemi. God bless you for watching. I will keep acknowledging you. You know the most I can when you are coming online. But please share with your friends the strange, the strange side of love. What makes that work? Let me give you. Another scenario. There's this guy called Kenneth Bianchi and his cousin Angele Bruno. Angele Bruno, you know, they, they were called the Hillside Stranglers. Hillside Stranglers. They, they, they were convicted for murdering 10 girls in America, in their state in America, as, uh, precisely in Los Angeles. You know, you can check it. Kenneth Bianca and Angelo Bruno, they were convicted for murdering, they murdered 10 girls. And you know what happened? These guys, they both got married while in prison. Some ladies fell in love with, you know, they all had lo very hot love affair while in prison. Even though the ladies that fell in love with, each, with them knew that they were murderers. They were serving jail times. In fact, they were waiting to be executed. But they, they got women who loved them and did not only love them, went into the prison to get married to them. Do you know, wonder why? The strange side. Of love. I read of one serial killer also, John Wayne Casey, John Wayne Gacy, and another one, T. 
Ted Bundy. Both of them, they, 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 they these, these guys, they were, they, one, of, one of them was called the Night Stalker. You know, the Night Stalker. No, that was Richard Ramirez, the Night Stalker. They were awaiting, these guys were awaiting the death, you know, they were waiting to be executed in prison. But each of these guys, uh, you know, serial killers, and their lovers knew who they were. They still went on and got married to them. The strange side of love. The strange side of love. And, and this will bring me to a very pertinent part, you know, of this discussion. You know, there are people who have been beaten by their men. There are wives who have been beaten by their men. Of course, in a very smaller proportion, there are men who have been beaten by their wives. Don't laugh. Don't say it's not possible. I have seen it with my own eyes. Hallelujah. You know, I remember one brother, I, you know, the brother went to UK. I remember how this guy called me one day. She, you know, and he was screaming, Pastor, come, Pastor, come. She's going to kill me. She's going to kill me. She's going to kill me. You know, and I took, I took, I quickly rushed down and drove down to his house. And I, I, I met them. They were in some serious fight. And the guy was, you know, he was, he was bent like this. And the lady was just hitting her, hitting her. Idiot, stupid, madman, this, that, that. And all he could do, he couldn't raise his finger to hit the girl, the woman. Anyway, it was, Pastor, are you looking at me? He's going to, she's going to kill me. She's going to kill me. Of course, this guy was well built. Well built, taller than the woman. The woman was strong anyway also. But of course, yeah, in Holland... Uh, in most of the Western countries, you beat a woman and you are gone. So there are some women, they actually beat their men. You know, the case I'm talking about, of course, this one didn't last long because there was a reason the guy was in the woman's life. So he was enduring all the beatings because he was waiting to get what he wanted. The moment he got his red thing, that red thing he wanted, he didn't even come back for his clothes. He was gone. Hallelujah. But there are some cases, you know, that the, the men stay, the women stay. But ever so often, the man is busy molesting this woman, beating the hell out of her. Do you also know that there are men who will not take no for an answer when it comes to the issue of sex? That when the wife says, oh, darling, I'm so tired, I, I, I'm not in the mood tonight, they will just go on and rape their wife. Are you asking me if it is possible to rape your own wife? Yes, it is possible when there is no mutual consent. When the two of you are not in agreement and you just force your way into her, that is rape. That's an abuse. So there are women who are being raped even in their own relationship. There are women who have been beaten by the person they confess to love. There are men who have been molested by their own wives. Being insulted, being called all sorts of names by their own wives. But they still say, I can't leave her. I can't leave him. The strange side of love. There is a certain community in Mauritania, it's called the Soninke, the Soninke community. In this community in Mauritania, you know, uh, it, it brings joy to a wife to be beaten by her husband. Go, go, go and check about the Soninke community in Mauritania. It, 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 it was like, if my husband does not beat me, he does not love me. The strange side of love. So they believe being beaten by their husband is a sign that the husband loves them. And so they, 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 they feel the pain, they, they, they are not happy about it, but at the end of the day, they are happy about it because it shows he cares, it shows he's jealous, it shows that he loves me. The strange side of love. Now, when others from other communities hear these things, they will be like, how can somebody be enjoying being beaten? 
and you call it love. But that is the strange side of love. Amen. There is this other strange side to love. You know, there are people who enjoy sex with pain. There are people, they, they have, they get kicks when pain is involved. You know, it's a kind of uh, emotional disorder anyway. You know, machism, machism, you know, when you enjoy pain, when pain gives you the kick, there is also what you call sadism and the narcissistic personality. These are people who enjoy pains, you know, they enjoy pain either uh, when they are inflicted, you know, with pain or when they inflict people with pain. The strange side of love. Amen. Okay. Okay. Let me see something. Oh, wow. I forgot to take my breakfast. Hallelujah. That's why when my wife is not around, I'm not, I don't get myself good. Lord, I bless you for this provision. May you nourish my body to the glory of your name. Amen. God bless you. Let me take a bite. Please have a bite of your toast also. Put some of your pap in your mouth. Take the bean cake. After all, it's breast pass. Mm. so much there's so much to learn here okay now why what what make what is it that makes people to stay in an abusive relationship you know like i told us at the beginning i'll be teaching out of experience you know i i noticed by god's divine grace as i was growing up i noticed you know every little there are some small small things that do not matter to people. They just register in my mind. They register in my heart. There are some small, small things I see around me that just register. And some of these things have helped me, have helped to mold me. And, and as I was growing up, I discovered that there is something God has deposited in me that makes me say something to people and they listen. I do not know how it happened, but it's 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 been there since when I was a ba I was a child. I remember if I mention this thing to my mom, she will never even remember. There was a time, right? I was a child. I was really a child. And my mom and my dad, they had some argument. I didn't know what they were talking about, but I didn't know it was an argument. They what they were talking. You know, I was some meters away from them. And after they had finished talking, by then, then my mom was not living in the house. You know, we were in the church, you know, uh, building. And then after they finished, I held my mother's hand and I began to sing a Yoruba song, Samba Ube, Ay Masiko Londa Mueda. And my mother said, oh, what? what? Did, you, did you hear what we were saying? I said, no. He said, but that song really, really, you know, fits into, it, it consoles me, it comforts me. 
some small, small things, you know, that help me to know God has gifted me, you know, with the voice of the learner to be able to say something to those who are passing through things. And by the grace of God, God will bring them out. And when it comes to the issue of relationship, I have not, I have not just discovered that God has gifted me in this area. So I'm still talking about the strange side of love. There was a time I also hosted this pastor from Nigeria. You know, I put him in this hotel in Endovi. And the day, one of the evenings when I went to pick him up, you know, I knocked on his door. And he said, oh, pastor, is that? I said, yes. Yeah. He said, okay, give me some minutes. While I was waiting for him to get out of the room, there was an, a room, a, a, an adjoining room, adjacent to his room. I started hearing some very strange, strange noises from that room. It drew my attention because I realized that it was the noise of a woman who was being beaten by a man. You know, and I was hearing, oh no, and the, I heard the, the, the sound of like somebody was using belts to hit somebody. And the lady was begging, oh, sorry, please, 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 sorry, please. You know, this thing went on for some minutes. And I was, I was almost tempted to pick my phone and call the police. But strangely, the next thing, the noise went. The tune changed. And I could hear that these guys had, had moved into lovemaking. They were now having sex. After the lady had been beaten. So there are some people, you know, when you hit them, they reply, they respond with, I love you. But that's talking about people who are psychologically challenged. So there are some people that derive pleasure from hurting people. They hurt you. The more they hurt you, the more pleasure they derive. They are called sadists. So, so, so that man is beating you not it's just because it gives him pleasure. There are some people like that. There are some people, the only way they want to show that they are in control is by most clean their way, is by exerting pressure, is by, you know, is by being, being abusive. There are people like that. The strange side of love. So how do you claim to love the one you are kicking, you are beating, you are raping? The strange side of love. How does the one who is being kicked and raped and abused claim to still love the man or love the woman, the strange side of love. And these things happen. There are many people, they come looking bright. They come to church, they come to occasions, they hold hands with their husband, but you don't want to know what they are passing through in the, on the floor of their marriages. They are being abused. They are being insulted. They are being kicked. They are being kicked. They are being treated like doormats. But they still come out to smile and take, you know, they take pictures and post pictures and make it look like, wow, our home is paradise. It's a lie. There's so much lie out there. And there are many women, they just don't want to talk. They are too ashamed to talk about it. Uh, don't even go to the side of the man. How many men want to tell his friend? Uh, uh, which man want to tell his friend that his wife is beating him? Because of the shame. But the unfortunate truth is that they th these things are happening out there. Why? Why do people endure abuse? Why do people still claim to love in spite of what they are going through? In the hand of the partner. I'm going to share some reasons with you today before we end. But please permit me to go through some of the comments I have here. 
I will need mercy to come and, you know, come and uh, be stand with me here and be doing some direct administration. I don't have money to pay you yet. Okay. <laughs> Glory be to God. Uh, let me see. Um. Whoa, whoa, whoa. God bless you, my daughter, Nancy. Annie Williams. God bless you. I love you. Agnes, my daughter, I love you. God bless you. God bless you. Pastor Ken Uyi, God bless you. That's a friend of mine that can, you know, ship in a comment that I will not reject. Okay. What is the oil that lubricates love in a marriage? Hmm. That one is very deep, Sister Oge Ikejiora. The oil that can lubricate love. The oil that can lubricate love in marriage is so much. And because I'm still going to come back to this question, I'm not going to go too deep into it. But for some of you who are also wondering, how do I make my marriage more interesting? You know, I'm going to come to that in a later discussion. But one thing you have to do is continue to appreciate what you have. Appreciate what you have. And when you are in a marriage, I want to assume foundationally, fundamentally, that you understand what love is. Why You should be able to answer the question, why am I in this marriage? What brought me here? What motivated me into this relationship? You should understand why you are in the marriage. You have to be sure that the motive for being in the marriage is right. Like I told you, if you are in a marriage because people are pressurizing you, that you are getting older, you should just go and marry, and then you just jump into bed with the next man or next woman that comes your way, you will just continue to live a life of frustration. So if you are in a marriage without the right motive, you will experience challenges. So number one, understand the true meaning of love. What kind of, what, what is your definition? How do you quantify or qualify the feelings you have for that person? And if you realize that there are question marks, you should be able to right the wrong. You should be able to correct the correct table. You should be able to put things in order. So get to know the true meaning. Get to evaluate your true feelings. So if you love somebody because the person was rich and the person is no longer rich now, now the riches, the wealth was what you loved. It was not the man. So how do you now start loving the man that you never even loved anyway? So you have to be sure, you have to be, you have to search yourself and understand and get to know that you know the true meaning of love and you, you can evaluate your feelings for that person and make sure it is right. Love is not to be endured, love is not to be managed. But there are many people who are just managing what they are. Be sincere with yourself. Are you managing this man? Are you managing this woman? So if what you have is just ma a management level, meanwhile you should be an executive director in that relationship, then, you know, it's going to be a lot of challenge. Of course, I have words of advice for, you know, situations like that, and we'll come to that later. So, understand the true meaning of love, evaluate your feelings for that person, make sure you are sincere, evaluate it. If you discover there's something to work out, there's something to correct, there's something to build, there's something to cut off, work on it. Okay, now, so, if we want to assume that these first two, three steps or demands or requirements have been fulfilled, and now you are in your marriage, but you want to make it more interesting, more fun, what do you do? One, you know, admire, continue to admire your partner. Continue to admire your partner. And don't just admire your partner in your heart. Vocalize it. 
Baby, you look beautiful. Darling, I love your haircut. You look handsome. Everybody, you know, gets some some inspiration inspiration from admiration. In, you know, inspire him, inspire her by admiring her, by admiring him, by admiring her. You know, I know it will be fun if your wife comes from this salon and you say, wow, baby, you look beautiful. I would like to pay that person who made your hair look so beautiful. You look, you look beautiful. You, are, you look angelic. You look this, you look that. I appreciate. She has dressed up. Oh, baby, you look so good in that dress. He has dressed up. Oh, my baby, you look so handsome in that suit. Show interest in the little, little details about one another's life. Do you know that there are men who are sitting watching football and the woman is coughing and sneezing and they can't even hear. They can't even say, darling, is everything okay with you? No, they are so engrossed in watching football that they are not even interested in the little details about their wife's life. A woman that left home smiling and laughing, she has come home with a frowned face. A man that said a cheerful bye-bye to you in the morning, he came back home and his face is not looking so welcoming. You should be interested in little, little details about each other. Little, little details. Don't ignore little, little details. Don't ignore little, little details. Do you know that sometimes the woman is just quiet or looking the other way because he's just trying to, she's trying to get your attention. And men could be attention seekers also. Men also love to seek attention. You should be sensitive to the language, the body language of your husband, the body language of your wife. Sometimes, sometimes in quietness, a message is being passed. Sometimes you hear, you hear something like, hmm, it's not that anything is wrong. She's looking for attention. You got to show interest in the little, little details concerning your partner. Show interest. Show interest. Admire your partner. Admire your partner and say it. What about vocalizing your love? Not only your admiration. There are couples who, who you know, who only say I love you to one another. Uh, how many times in a year? <laughs> Lord have mercy. <laughs> Maybe twice in a year. Maybe on her birthday or on his birthday. That's the only time you get to hear, I love you, baby. You have to vocalize your emotion. You have to vocalize your love. Especially African men. They hardly say, I love you to their wives. They say, oh, but you know. Even if their wife says, but why are you not saying you love me? Ah, but you know. Why are you not saying you love you? I love you to your wife. Oh, she knows. She knows that I love. She knows that I love her. Some of us think giving gifts is enough. It's enough language of love. It's good to give gifts, but it's good to utter words. Words are powerful. I love you, baby. I have missed you. Do you know each time you go to work in the morning, maybe you're on leave and your, your wife is still working or your wife is on leave and you are still working and then you come back home and your wife tells you, do you know each time you go to work, those eight hours, they are like eight months. I really miss you. Who will not love to be welcomed like that? Amen. And then you have to learn to say the right thing at the right time. There is, the, there is the psychology of timing in your communication. There is the psychology of, you know, your husband loves sports. If you can't love the sport and watch the sport with him, don't, because you want attention, don't go and start talking, eh, darling, you remember that bill eh, that we are supposed to pay? You know, if we don't pay, it will go to the lawyer. What? 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 There is timing for communication. There is timing for communication. 
It should not be like when this guy is so is so on fire, you know, he's on fire. This guy is ready to 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 throw the bomb. He's ready to shoot his gun in your bedroom at night, whether the light is on or off. And then you know the guy is is just in a is 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 in a hurry to to manifest. And you start saying, yeah, but that wait 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 yeah, sweetheart, wait wait wait. Uh, that 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 money you promised me. When am I going to get it? That one that can kill the anointing. It can spoil the oil. It can pollute the oil. Because what you are asking for, even though it's right and legitimate, you are, you are saying it at the wrong time. So learn to communicate. Learn to verbalize communication. Learn to, you know... <laughs> Another part of communication is sign talk. Learn to talk to other, to each other in signs and wonders. You know, there are some languages that you use among each other, you know, that only you yourselves know. So in, you are in a party and, you know, your, your, your husband is telling you, baby, uh, you know, you don't really know where, where I feel like being right now. And your baby says, where do you, where do you feel like being? And he said, I just be, I feel like going into Jerusalem now. I just like, I feel like visiting Jerusalem now. The people around you there, they are wondering, ah, this is a party. Why is this man talking about Jerusalem? Meanwhile, your wife knows what it means to visit Jerusalem. These are things that are strange, but they, they kick, they, they make your adrenaline to pump correctly. Use some signs, use some languages that only you and your wife can understand. When we start talking about sex, I'm going to tell you that you need to conduct, you know, a, a, a ceremony, naming ceremony for your wife and for your husband every time. Okay. So my wife's name is Josephine. My wife's name is Damilola. My wife's name is Shinyiri. But then I've, I've conducted naming ceremony for my wife. And so I, re, I renamed that baby. What, what, what name do you call your husband? What name do you call your, your wife? Uh, Papa, Papa John, Papa Johnson, Papa, Papa, Papa Shima, Papa Sikira, Papa this, Papa that. I'm not your Papa. I'm not your father. I mean, there are some of these things we inherited from our, you know, great grandparents, and we are still allowing these things to manifest. You know, brother this, brother that. I don't want to imagine I'm, I'm in bed with my wife and we're in the act of making love and, you know, maybe she doesn't know any song to sing at that time. She wants to sing my name. And she's saying to me, oh, brother, oh, brother Williams, oh, brother Williams. I'm like, ah, what, what can brother, what is, what has brother Williams got to do with what we are doing? I'm not your brother. Just call me, roti me, sweetheart, darling. So, you know, all these things, they make things, they, they, they all help. Your marriages. Respect one another, honor one another. Be a true wife, be a true husband. And if you want to know the biblical requirements, I'm just going into smaller, smaller details about what it means to be a wife and what it means to be a husband. You can go and study the book of Ephesians chapter 5. Play your role well. Do not wait for the other person to fulfill his or her own role before you play your role. Love your wife. Honor your husband. Honor your husband. Love your wife. Be ready to die for your wife. Protect your wife. Honor your husband. Talk about your husband with some pride. Hallelujah. I see some of my daughters are laughing there. <laughs> Messi is laughing, 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 laughing. Okay. <laughs> Sister Dennis also, I'm making you laugh, but that is the reality. So these are some of the ways you can oil your marriage to make it work. You know, you also have to be together. You have to learn the art of togetherness. You have to learn the art of togetherness. 
Maybe you don't understand what I'm saying. You have to learn the act of togetherness. Now, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. The Bible says God made them two. You know, he made them man and woman. Right? Man and woman made him them. You know. And then, when it came to marriage, it became one plus one is equal to one. So therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and shall cleave to his wife. And the two shall become one. Isn't that the equation of God? This one of the strangest equations. Mathematical equation. One plus one is equal to one. Now two shall be one. Is something many people do not even understand. Does, 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 does that mean, you know, the man, the, the physiognomy of the man will change. The physical attributes of a man will become that of a woman. Or the physical attribute of a woman will become that of a man. No. Even in our oneness, we have our uniqueness. So you have to know that one plus one is a blend. Something came out of the man. The thing is now fitted back into the man. So if it is your arm, your arm that was removed in an accident and by some work of technological grace, that arm is fitted back. That arm still remains arm. But it's now part of your body. So one plus one is equal to one does not mean that we do not have individual differences anymore. You have to learn to understand your individual differences. What makes my wife unique? What are her peculiar characteristics? What are the peculiar characteristics of my, of my husband? Marriage is like a school. And like you have heard many times, you get the, the certificate before you even start the journey. But it's like a school where you have to learn, learn, and learn more and more and more every day. You have to learn more and more every day. Marriage is a school. So, you know, being one, being together means understanding and knowing who your partner is, who your wife is, who your husband is, what, what upsets him. What, what is it that, that awakens the best in him or awakens the best emotion in her? Little, little details about one another. What color? What is the size of his shirt? There are many men, there are many men, they don't even know the size of their wife's pants. They've never even bought underwear for their pants or for their, for their wives. They don't even know. Come on. Little, little details. You should be together. You should be, your thoughts should be so galvanized that when you are thinking something and you say it out, your partner will be like, oh, I was just thinking about the same thing. You become one. You accept each other. You have accepted each other. I know you are shorter than, my, than me. But I have accepted you like that. You cannot grow taller again. That's part of being together. That is oneness. I know you are like this. But I have made up my mind to love you the way you are for the rest of my life. That is oneness. That is togetherness. And then plan together. Talk together. Discuss together. Don't create a world within a world. And then you have to understand what is it that makes a woman, you know, that, that turns the head of a woman. What kind of attention does a woman need? You know, do you know, hello, where are you? 
this simple communication hello darling hello if nancy is saying hello my sweet husband isaac where are you is different the way the man will interpret that is different from when you know the man calls the woman and say hello sweetheart where are you i don't know if i'm making sense to you now you see when the woman hears hello sister where are you the first thing that strikes her is that who he's missing me he wants me he's doing that is that is that when you when it is the other way around the first thing that strikes the man is uh -huh. she's trying to monitor me she's trying to control me you know do you know what man you know do you know what state the man was naturally born into having his own territory a man is born into a place of his own he had a territory that is his comfort zone so sometimes the man needs to be left alone he needs to study he needs to meditate you have to understand why when is it this man wants to go back to his original state it is why in that state that you know god saw that it was not good for him to be, be fed. the loneliness came the feeling of loneliness began to manifest so sometimes you need to give him that zone you know let, let him just be a man let him just be it doesn't mean that you are ignored you are you you are not you don't he doesn't love you anymore but sometimes the man just wants to watch his football you have to understand that he wants to watch his game he wants to study his the, the book he wants to read the bible so so many things i can say about how to oil your marriage but no fully whether you have to understand what love means you have to evaluate your own feelings for the man you have to learn to admire each other you have to learn to communicate you have to learn to appreciate you have to learn to be one you have to build on your togetherness you know this and many more which time will not permit me are ways through which you can oil your marriage so that it gets sweeter and sweeter. Amen. It's not just about putting food on the table. You must spice that food with some love. You must spice that food with some love. Do you know there are men who don't even remember their women's birthday until it is like three months gone? And they will start, uh, oh baby, I'm sorry, this year I missed your birthday again. It was three months ago. And the way the woman was waiting all the time, hoping against hope that this year, this man, he vowed last year that I will never miss my birthday. But the birthday came and is gone. He didn't even still remember. Not the following day, not the following week, not even the following month. Remember each other's birthday. Remember anniversaries. You know, learn, learn to... To leave the early days of your relationship. Leave the children out of it. Go out. Walk together. Hold hands. Go to a park. Come on, spend your money. Spend some money to spoil yourself. Go, 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 go. Go out for a weekend in a certain resort, in a certain hotel or something. Go for some weekend. Put some nice music. Enjoy yourselves. Be youthful again. Be youthful again. Stop carrying the whole world on your head to the extent that you are shrinking. And your husband is not able to reach you again. Your wife is not able to reach you again because you are so concerned about other people that you don't even have time to think about your wife or your husband. Have time for each other. There is a time you need to close your door to the whole world, even to your children, so that you can enjoy those early days you know vibrations and emotion you can re rewind you can rewind <laughs> hallelujah you can rewind 
You know, love is something that never, it never gets old. It never gets old. <laughs> Hallelujah. Sometimes in the future, I'm going to be talking about first love. You know, first love and all that stuff. I'm also going to be talking about the virtue of virginity. I'm going to, it's, going, it's going to blow your mind the what God has deposited in my heart concerning virginity and all that stuff. That people's opinion about virginity is way upside down. But today I'm just talking about the strange side of love. Um, uh, learn to live your early days of your relationship. God bless you. Respect your spouse. God bless you. Watch what you say. I'm so glad that you are getting the gist. Communication in the relationship is the best thing and also forgiveness. Wow, I love that forgiveness. That is another topic we are going to take. Forgiveness, you know, that is not something we can just uh, wave. Forgiveness is something very deep. You know, it's something very deep. I'm going to teach about forgiveness actually in the word exposition i'll be doing next week's friday forgiveness and forgiving hallelujah so keep loving keep trying keep trying keep working it out keep working it out keep working it out it needs working out it needs your concerted effort do not become like boom burned out your relationship needs constant fire constant fire constant fire don't take things for granted don't let your husband become your brother don't let your your wife become your sister don't become apathetic in your love no more feelings your wife sits on you and you are you don't even feel anything because she has become like a sister or a brother no come on she's not your brother she's not your sister okay i believe you have learned something then get, get some very, very hot, hot pants. Put them on. Let Emmanuel see them. Let him see those your beautiful legs. Put some hot pants. Hello. Keep, keep tempting him. Keep tempting her. It's not a sin. After all, that thing he carries belongs to you. Those things she is carrying belong to you. So you have the right to energize, to activate movement in those areas. Hmm? Learn to understand the science of touch. Touch. Just touch. Just touch means a lot. There are many couples, they can't even hold hands in the public. They believe it is a sin, oh, hey, Jesus. You can't hold, you can't, even the wife will say, say leave me, don't you see, people are washing. So what? Let them wash. We are no longer in, in, in primary school and school. I remember when I was, <laughs> I remember when I was in the secondary school and some of my secondary school friends, they are online, you know, uh, KB can, can bear me witness. In those days when we were in secondary school and maybe in the high, even in the higher school, when you have a, a boyfriend or a girlfriend, when the boy is coming this way and you see him, you will go the other direction. It is only in dark, the summer grand, and then you, you now come together and be, you know, and be touching and be doing this and be talking and things like that. It's not, that is not how love is supposed to be. There is the open side of love. Come on, hold your wife's hand. Grab, grab that man. Even in the open, grab his hand. Jump on him. Play childishly. Play, play like you are children. Like you are the only ones in the world. Sometimes we are so much arrested by what people will say, what people will think, what will they say, what will they think. Well, let them think, let them say, this is my wife. I'm not holding another person's wife. Hallelujah. I'm not holding another person's wife. 
You cannot even give your wife a kiss because the children are dead. Oh man. Why? If they don't like to see it, let them close their eyes. I will give my wife a kiss. These are some of the things, you know, we should not create a prison out of our relationship. We should not turn marriage into a, a prison yard. We should be free with one another. We should be able to express our emotions without feeling bad. Amen. Why do you have to wait for your husband to crawl beside you every time before you guys can make love? Meanwhile, you are there. You desire your husband. You want him to hold you. You want him to express love. You want him to travel deep and down. But because you are you, you, you weren't brought up like that, you think uh, you know he would think lowly of me if I want if I go and hold him, if I go and sit on his legs, and uh, he would think uh, what well, you know. And some of you is like, what is wrong with you? Can you not hold yourself? You are a bushman. You are a bushman. You are a cake. Let him sit on your laps. Let him put his a hand around your neck. Woman. Be bold to approach your man. Snuggle yourself under the blanket. In, you know, not only in the night self, during the day. Shake. Eh? Shake for him to see. Don't wait till the lights are off. That was what happened to Jacob and he ended up uh, marrying two sisters. Light off, light off, light off. He didn't even know he was, he was lighting another person's candle. Be real. Hallelujah. Okay, I hope I've been able to, to answer your question a bit. Like I said, there's so much to say about these things. But, uh, you know, if I keep talking about this particular thing, I will not be able to finish what I'm doing. Look at my breakfast is already cold because of Oge's questions. Whoa, time is fast spent. Let me try and round up for today. There is still more to come. And so today I've been talking about the strange side of love. And so let me quickly give you some points about why people still stay in a seemingly abusive, seemingly painful, seemingly hurtful, seemingly uninteresting relationship. Why do people still stay in abusive relationship why is love being expressed in the strangest of ways in my own little research there are so many you know there are so many reasons why people still stay in a seemingly you know unproductive or seemingly uh, violent relationship number one is because of their orientation there are some people they grew up seeing violence that's the way they grew up that's what, to them, marriage is about. Some people grew up feeling or seeing that the, the only way to show to the woman that you are a man is by beating, overpowering her. It's an orientation. Orientation of violence. Like this place I mentioned in Mauritania, that's the way they pass it from generation to generation. That when your husband beats you, is a sign that he loves you. So some people behave like that. You know, that, you know, reasons for, I mean, I'm talking about reasons why, you know, one person is abusive in a relationship. Excuse me. I'm not talking yet about why people endure them. Why do people do what they do? Why do, is it that somebody who's supposed to be loving suddenly becomes a monster? You know, there's a good friend of mine, you know, uh, a, a acquaintance of mine that I know, you know, she, she's like a colleague of mine. And I think over a year ago, she had a very beautiful wedding with this man, handsome man, beautiful woman. And we all were there. We lined up the sides of the, you know, of the steps and we gave flowers. We sang for them. And they looked so beautiful and happy together. You know, but I was shocked when over a week ago, I saw this woman and asked her how the marriage is. She said, no, I'm out of it. And I said, why? She said, suddenly I realized 
the guy is a white beater. He was beating me, shouting at me, beating my son, harassing us, doing this, doing that. So actually, sometimes you meet somebody that looks like he draws from heaven. And, I, you, you know, the moment you start the journey, you just discover that the man is a monster. There are many people who come to church, they are devils, but they put on the garment of a sheep because they have come to look for wife. I want you to know that when the bad guys are looking for wife, they go to the good market. The bad guys don't look for bad girls. They want the good one. And so to get a good one, they pretend to be a good one. So why is it that sometimes, you know, somebody who looks loving, who appears loving and kind, suddenly becomes an animal? It could be because of the person's orientation. It could be because of the person's orientation. That's the orientation I had. I grew up seeing our mothers being beaten. I saw with my own father, I saw with my daddy, my uncle, I saw him beating his wives. And I'm asking myself, why? Why? Is this how, what it means? You know, but glory be to God that before I got married, I had an encounter, I had an argument with my fiancé then, with my girlfriend then, and then I, I, I was so angry, I gave her a slap. And then I came out of my room and I met my daddy's wife and she looked at me and she said Willie so you also have this disease in you at that point I realized that it was a disease it was like a, an, inherit, an inherited disease it was like a DNA issue and that day I made up my mind that in the, for the whole of my life I will never lift my hand to beat my wife. Now, I've never beaten my wife. Since we got married, I've never even, you know, like shake her hand. Like, are you, are you this? Are you this? Or are you crazy? I've never tried to be violent with my wife. I fought that battle before I entered into marriage. So even though it was your orientation, you can fight it. You can decide, I don't want it. I don't want to be like my father. I don't want to be abusive like my mother. I mean like my father or even like my mother. I don't want to shout at my husband the way my, my wife, my mother used to shout at my, at my father. You can decide on some of these things. It's a changeable attitude. It's a changeable attitude. So abusive, abusive orientation of violent orientation is one of the reasons why some people behave the way they do. Does it mean they don't love you? It may not mean that they don't love you, but that is the only way they know to express. To them, it's even an expression of love. But it doesn't have to be like that. It's not written anywhere in the Bible that a man needs to beat his wife in order to exercise authority. No. As a strange way of expressing love. Number two reason is what I call the, uh, yeah, the masochism. Masochism, that's the derivation of sexual gratification from being subjected to physical pain or humiliation. I've, I've, I've spoken about it. So there are many people, they are, they, are, they are masochists. They actually, you know, they derive pleasure from being hurt, from being hurt, especially sexual pleasure. So some people are abusive because the partner actually wants to be abused. So there are partners, they want to be abused. They love to be abused. You said it's strange. It is strange, but it is true. It is a kind of disorder. But to them, like the women in that, in that community in Mauritania, to them being abused is a sign of love. These are masochists. They derive pleasure in being abused. It is often also because they have very low esteem of themselves. I will come to that. 
And I also spoke about sadism. It's another reason why, you know, strange, strange abuses happen in relationships. And I told you a sadist is the one who derives pleasure from inflicting pain on another person. The masochists derive pleasure from being, being hurt. The sadist derives pleasure from hurting somebody. So there are some people in this world, it gives them a kick to make you cry. They just love it to make it, it makes it, it makes them, it, 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 it gives them a feeling of being in authority, being in control, because they can make you cry. They can make you beg. Please don't hurt me. Please don't hit me. Please, please, please. They, it gives them a kick. They are score sadist. So the reason some people are violent in marriages is because they are sadist. Hmm. And it's more than the issue of sex. They just love control. I don't know if I just stop here and continue next uh, Saturday. But let me see if I can add one or two other things. There are those who there are those who have what you call narcissistic personality. Narcissistic personality. These are people who have excess, you know excessively overblown ego they have ego this is commonness with men narcissistic personality they have an overblown you know uh, impression about themselves they think they are bigger than who they are than, than they are they think they are higher than they are they think they are more important than everybody they want to be listened to they like to be obeyed. So they use that to service their warped ego, narcissistic personality. So that husband may just have a narcissistic personality. The woman may have a narcissistic personality. Narcissistic personality. Overblown ego. You know, they don't they they, they they don't want to have empathy. They don't have feelings for your pain. They don't have feelings for the pain of others. They don't even they don't they don't they don't they don't think about it when they are oppressing you. They are not thinking about how you will how you will react. They are just thinking about how it makes them feel. And so some people have narcissistic personality. On the other side of it, there are, there are people who have very, very highly, I mean, terribly low or damaged ego, self-esteem. They have low self-esteem. They have low self-esteem. You know, maybe next week I'm going to be talking about three types of men. That you can encounter in a marital situation and one of them is going to be the hunter there are people they are hunters you know there are people who, who just look for you know an elephant they want to hunt an elephant because it gives them a kick there are some people who have you know, I'll talk about that next time anyway. But there are people, they have low self-esteem. They don't see themselves as, you know, being equal to. Some people think, you know, the person they married is too beautiful for them to have. The man is too handsome. He's, he does not, we don't belong in the, in the same class. So I have to muzzle my way to be recognized in this relationship. They have low self-esteem. There are many men who abuse their wives because they have so low self-esteem. What is it that will push a man to begin to hit a woman in the first place? If you are a real man, why don't you go and, go and, go and slap a policeman on the street? Why don't you go and slap a soldier? If you want to show that you know how to fight, why can't you go and slap a soldier? If you are a real man, 
but you turn your wife into a punching bag because you have low self-esteem because there's something wrong with you you don't have the right personality and so some of these reasons you know they are, these are some of the reasons why people behave the way they do there are some people they do that just to satisfy people others they have friends who beat their wives when they are at the bar or they are whatever wherever they are this one is talking ah my wife ah, my wife dares not look me in the face my wife dares not be late with my food my wife that my wife this my wife that and then you want to prove that you belong also and then you become a personality or a person that god did not create you to be god didn't create you to be a wife beater but because you also want to show your friends that you are in control it's because you have low self-esteem hallelujah the strange side of love and so next week there's more to say about this I'm going to talk to you about why people who are abused are spoken about why people are abused now why people behave strangely in their marriages next week I'm going to be talking about why those who are abused cannot just pick up their bag and walk out and say bye-bye why 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 and coupled with that I will combine to help you dig, dig into the heart of those who fall in love with criminals and white beaters. White beaters and the women who love them. Men abusers, you know, uh, men abusers and the men who still love them. Why? What is behind such behavior god bless you richly i believe you have been blessed today i just want to pause there because uh, we have almost hit two hours you know on this topic and we one can just go on and go on communication and relationship is the best thing god bless you for your comments god bless you my daughter you know uh, miracle for being with me god bless you my own daddy uh, reverend isaac tulua Aguela, the man who gave birth to me in ministry. God bless you, sir. I appreciate you. God bless you, my own sister. Falai, Caroline. Carol, God bless you. I love you. Thank you for being with me today. Patricia, my daughter, God bless you. And again, Monisha Day, I bless God for your life. Nancy, what's your question? What if the foundation of the relationship started wrongly? How to press the reset button? So if you started wrongly, how do you reset? I love that that word reset. How do you press the reset button? Nancy, please allow me to answer that question next week because it is always possible to reset the button when you know uh, you know there's a willingness. When there's a willingness, even after divorce, if after you are divorced, it is still possible to reset the button. Because divorce is like driving a car and getting involved in an accident. Sometimes the car, the insurance people will come and say, oh, this is a total write-off. That means it is not redeemable. Sometimes they say, oh, it is the engine that is damaged. It is the fender. It is the tire. It is this that is damaged. That means there is still something redeemable in that car. And so... It's about looking at the relationship. Is it a totally damaged relationship? Is it a total write-off? Or only some things are damaged? Are there things you can change and so that that car can still become rideable and usable? Are there things you can do? Do you have to change the color? Do you have to repaint it? Do you have to change some parts? You know, these are some of the things that will help us to understand about resetting the button of a relationship that started wrongly. And you know you will be better off at the end of these teachings i hope and i do believe you have been blessed today thank you for being online with me pastor ken you know i love you and your wife so very much you know you have become part of me and i will always 
love you and pray for you. You know, let the love, let the, the, the music of love continue to play between you and my daughter. Give her some very nice treat today after having listened to this message. God bless you, Nancy. God bless you, everyone, for being with me. I love you all. And until next Saturday, when I come your way again on Saturday Morning Lock Show, it is bye.